Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 26, 2020. So yesterday we had our second sweet relief day of a rally after um, all the good, warm, and fuzzy feelings from the uh, stimulus package moving through the Senate. It is the first day we have seen in a secondary rally that we've actually seen in weeks. So let's take a look, let's settle in, take a look at the Thursday morning edition of the Morning Market Prep video, and let's see what we can deal with or expect today. So this morning, we have an interesting day setting up. First off, we have futures um, right now pushing down. We left behind yesterday these indecisive candle patterns all over the indexes. And if you take a look, we rallied up and we tagged that 2018 low as resistance, and we backed away from it hard by the end of the day leaving behind that indecisiveness. Now, one of the reasons that is the case is because everyone is really worried about the jobless numbers this morning. And the wonder, and everyone's wondering, will that warm and fuzzy that we got from Congress, that $2 trillion in stimulus, will that be enough to mask the potential damage that could be coming in this number at 8.30 a.m. Eastern this morning? Hard to tell. Um, and I think everyone was just running for the doors to protect themselves ahead of that number today. So we're looking at a little bit of a gap down this morning. Not bad. We had um, Asian markets last night. They sold off. We had um, uh, have European markets modestly down this morning as we wait for this number. Um, there are consensus, you know, is somewhere over 700,000 in jobless claims. The... There are folks out there saying that it could be as high as three and a half million. Now that would be an absolute shock to the system. Let's hope we're not seeing that just yet. But as these uh, virus outbreak um, impacts continue to trickle into our economic data, we can expect some pretty shocking numbers to start coming out and maybe even um, that the return of a little bit of panic um, to the market. We'll have to watch and wait. Can the bulls hold on? Let's hope so, but we have some uncertainty ahead of us. And then we head into the weekend. If you guys check the, the virus numbers at all today, death toll has now jumped over a thousand and we're approaching 70,000 in infections. New York is in a very serious crisis situation as their numbers continue to escalate um, really exponentially. Um, they are in a healthcare crisis there, and it seems like um, we still have several weeks ahead of us of, of these nasty, nasty impacts from this. So, uh, it may weigh heavy on the market. I know it's going to weigh heavy on me heading into this weekend. And I plan, I closed out all of my, all of my trades yesterday, um, made some very nice profits in a two day move. Uh, thank you, Mr. Market. And uh, close those out as the market was rallying yesterday uh, to the upside. And now I plan to stay, except for maybe some very quick intraday trading it could be possible. I plan to stay on the sideline through the weekend. These uh, the uncertainty in this path forward is so um, so dramatic, and the impacts to co companies and individuals is um, so tremendous. It's just hard to hard to know what the market is going to do, and I just can't imagine the news getting any better over the weekend. And uh, that going to be pretty pretty substantial pressure on the market. Um, as um, I speak here, we're now down 220 
Um, whoops, I didn't mean to grab that line. We're now down 220 um, in the Dow futures and uh, falling. They've been bouncing around pretty dramatically here this morning. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at the SPY real quick. SPY made a nice rally back yesterday. And notice we popped right up in here and we tagged this resistance. So let me just move a line up here. Tag that resistance right in there. And so we moved up, triggered that resistance area and backed away strongly for it from it leaving behind another indecisive uh, candle pattern if we look at our um, our averages notice that our 50-day moving average is very close to crossing down through the 200 um, pretty pretty ugly technicals um, overall in these charts uh, to be dealing with if we take a look at the Nasdaq now the Nasdaq I thought had the best opportunity to recover a technical pattern and it did uh, for a short period of time. We recovered, we ran up here, we tagged that resistance level. And unfortunately, the NASDAQ was unable to hold that 500 day moving average by the close and ended up being the only uh, index of the four indexes unable to hold positive gains into the day. And now this morning, we're looking at a gap down here this morning as well on the nasdaq uh, pressure on this market certainly um, starting to show itself again and then let's take a look at iwm iwm managed to hold on to some profit um, yesterday some upside um, but it's looking to gap down a little bit this morning as we wait on that jobless data so certainly not a good situation with the 50-day moving average having crossed down now through the 200 and the 500 the 200 is below the 500 we're obviously on the wrong side of the world here in iwm um, no real uh, no real bright spots in the technicals here on the chart yet, other than the fact that we did finally catch a two-day rally let's take a look at um the VIX. One thing that's been concerning me is the last couple of days that the market has been going up. We had a gap down here on um, uh, Tuesday um, and then rallied back. The The VIX just kept rallying back up. The, the, the fear was rising with the market. And as you can see, we had a little bit of a follow through to that yesterday with that fear continuing to rise. Holding up here over 60 handles, making it very dangerous to trade anything in options. The bid ask spreads are incredibly wide. The open interest is terrible. And the um, options are extremely expensive. Um, it also tells us that the volatility in price action of any stock right now is very, very dangerous and very challenging, except for those that are very experienced. This is a pretty rough market uh, to be trying to trade. It's probably better to be standing on the sidelines um, let's take a look at t2122 which is the four week new high new low ratio and although in the last two days we have had an amazing rally up notice we have just barely come up out of the bottom here on t2122 suggesting that we are still in that bullish reversal pattern but with so much heavy data coming our way that could be pretty impactful um, anything is possible here we could uh, we could continue to zoom higher if that number is better than expected we could really begin to sink um, um, kind of ignoring what um, what came out of Congress yesterday if those jobless numbers really begin to rise. Guys, as I speak, we're just continuing to sink. We are now down 290 points in Dow futures. So be very, very careful here at the open. Uh, there's a lot of concern heading into that jobless number. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar has a few things on it, obviously, that are going to be very impactful and very very important we have the GDP number now right now GDP is not showing or at least the consensus estimates is not expecting a major impact on that GDP just yet so um, that could hold up 
and be pretty good, uh, pretty good shape. Kind of like we had yesterday in the durable goods orders, just not seeing that impact just yet. But then we have that um, international trading goods and jobless claims coming right after. And I think everyone in the world right now is focused on this um, with those estimates being uh, so high on those claims. So watch that closely. We also have natural gas and um, Fed balance sheet later on today. Um, obviously, Fed balance sheet is probably rising almost exponentially with our unlimited operations. Um, whether that will have an impact on the market, I don't know. And then keep in mind, on Friday, we still have personal incomes and consumer sentiment, which could easily be uh, majorly affected um, as we head into the weekend. So my plan is really to be standing aside. I made my money yesterday. Um, I think I'm probably going to be standing aside and... Um, comfortably holding on to my capital heading into this uncertain weekend as these numbers just continue to escalate, um, shockingly escalate um, around the country. Dow futures are now down 330 points, continuing to fall. Be very, very careful, everyone. So let's take a look at what's going on on our earnings calendar today. We have our biggest day this week of earnings. And um, on our earnings calendar, we have a few notables to be uh, paying attention to. Now, whether or not they will be able to come out from the cloud of the jobless numbers, that is yet to be seen. But let's take a look at some of those that are kind of notable. Um, uh, we've got CSIQ reporting this morning. Uh, looks like they're gapping up. Apparently a good report this morning, gapping up this morning, looking strong here. Um, FDS, FDS, uh, don't see a report here yet, just a big wide bid ass spread. FDS um, might be um, one to pay attention to here today. GME, those gamers. Gamers, um, one of the things that's going on is everybody's staying home and all those kids home from school. There's a lot of game playing going on. Um, it's even having some effect on the uh, bandwidth of the um, internet with uh, so much movie playing and game playing going on um, in the market. Um, take a look at GME. It's been trying to rally up a little bit here this morning. We'll want to watch this pretty closely um, on its earnings report, JEF. JEF, Jeffries, um, looking to report today. We have KBH reporting today. KBH has been rallying into this earnings report. We'll have to wait and see how it actually reports this morning. Um, L U L U oh Lulu Lulu those stretchy pants been really happy here the last few days rallying up out of this low expecting some good earnings apparently we'll have to wait and see when that reports today M O V going to report today S I G and last but not least Restoration Hardware um, will be reporting results today so we'll want to keep an eye on that. Keep in mind, we could be in a situation where we'll, we won't get a vote now um, on the stimulus package out of the House. The House is playing some politics with it. They need their moment in, in the spotlight, I guess. And so it's going to roam around in uh, Washington, D.C. a little bit longer. Now the House is taking it up, and the last report I heard is there may not even be, they may not even be taking up the bill until Friday, which um, who knows if we can get something uh, done by this weekend or sometime this weekend, maybe next week before it actually gets to the president. I don't know, but certainly um, experiencing some more delays on that, which could weigh on the market if there's no vote by the weekend. Um, let's take a look um, at a few things that you might want to consider, but I got to tell you guys, it's really difficult for me to, uh, I don't plan to trade anything. It's difficult for me to put out anything for a potential trade just simply because it is so, so dangerous right now in the market. However, there are a few patterns that are important to be picking up on. You know, a couple places for safe havens that you might go is gold. Um, 
GLD, GLD moved up sharply. Now, part of this rally is just based on the fact that we're flooding the market with dollars. And when that happens, all current or commodity prices tend to rally. But this had a big move up. Any rest or pullback in here could set up an opportunity for maybe a little bit of a safe haven in here. This is also one of those places that people will run as a protection to um, inflation. When you flood the, the market with currency, uh, flood the market with dollars, there's always the potential after we start coming out of this of a huge spike in inflation. So watch that closely. That might be a place to look. You could also look at some of these um, places I, I, I saw in um, the financial sector, um, XLF. XLF, a nice little rally coming up. And if we look at this on more of an hourly chart, I'm going to go to, let me go to an hourly chart with our moving averages. You can see in here that we had a pretty substantial move up, breaking above that hourly 50 day moving average. Saw that in, in almost every one of the financials out there. So we are trying to create a bit of a, a recovery here. The question is, will these be in, in, majorly impacted by that jobless number? I don't know. Watch some of these patterns. You're going to have to go to some of those shorter term charts for that to see some of those patterns uh, starting to move up um, in the charts. Other places that you might be able to look is to take a look at like VXX. Now VXX, I'm going to go to a 15 minute chart. VXX is a uh, kind of the retail uh, VIX here. And if you look at this, the, if this could set up some upside potential moves. We have broke through this downtrend on this short term. We broke through the downtrend rallying back up and that fear could be escalating still as we head into this weekend. So places like that might be a place that you can look for a uh, those quick trades, a little bit of money that you can pull out of the market, that kind of thing if that fear rises after we see that jobless number. Other places that are starting to show some signs of improvement, you've got to look pretty carefully, are stocks like um, AMD, AMD showing that nice rally. This is an hourly chart rallying up, running into some price resistance and pulling back. Let's look at this on a daily chart. And you can see we ran up there and hit that 50 day moving average and pulled back. But if we can pull back and hold some support in here, AMD might actually have a chance to uh, stiffen up here just a little bit. We did break that downtrend. That's a good sign. So now we need to find some price support in here to hold and then maybe have that opportunity to rally higher. So there are a few techs starting to show signs of some relief. We'll have to watch this pretty closely. And I got to tell you guys, in light of the um, employment number and the likelihood that it will be pretty dramatically bearish, um, I'm planning to just stand aside. So if you decide to trade, I think probably the wise thing would be looking for those quick intraday trades, maybe pull some money out of the market. But by and large, standing aside and particularly heading into this weekend as these numbers escalate, the wise thing may be to stand aside. So with that, everyone, if you guys could do me a favor, I know this is pretty awful market to be asking for favors in but if you find these videos helpful if you find um, this information um, helpful if you could do me a favor and click that subscribe button on youtube and then click that bell icon when it pops up also if you could uh, do me a favor and click that thumbs up button and leave a comment if you feel the video is worthy of that i want to say thank you to everyone and i know this is a tough challenging market but guys if we work together as a community if we hang together if we support each other we'll get through this um it seems overwhelming right now in a lot of places. The market is just so bearish 
And um, so much damage has been created um, by this virus and the impacts to businesses. It's hard to see the path forward, but trust me on this, we will get through this. And if we hang together, if we stick together, if we protect our capital, there will be better days ahead. So everyone, I wanna wish you all a fantastic day. And if you're heading out and just saying, look, I'm gonna shut off my computer for the weekend, I certainly understand that. I wanna say, have a great weekend. Be with your family, you know, look for those positive things and stay, um, stay positive because better days are forward. Everyone take care. I wish you all the best and we'll talk to you all bright and early. Have a good one.